Hello everyone. Welcome to another one of my uh, Life of Light talks. So my topic today is how to deal with woes and worries. So uh, full disclosure, I worry too. Uh, I'm not like, you know, the perfect example of, you know, I'm so spiritual, I have no more worries. I worry. Uh, um, I think all humans worry. So that's, that's the, that's number one thing. It's not, it's not wrong to worry. It's just frustrating. So at the same time, also woes, you know, when you're sad, that's also human and that's, that's a good thing. Uh, sadness is part of your human experience, so uh, do not judge your sadness. The question only is when it lasts too long, how do you get out of it? So that's a valid question. But being sad, I think, is also very healthy. It's a healthy feeling. Sometimes we need to be sad. We need to have melancholy uh, to be complete. So we have to embrace our feelings. Uh, but as usual, my talks are really about, you know, what do you do when, some, when, you, when, you, when you're stuck, when you can't get any further. And as always, I have listened I made some notes and I have listened to to what I'm supposed to say and uh, I again I received one particular sentence to the question what to do with woes and worries and the sentence was hand them all to me. So the simple and best solution is give your worries to God. So what when you are an atheist and, you know, you don't believe in God? <laughs> How do you do it? Uh, so this is the question of what is God? Uh, so God is not some being that sits somewhere uh, ruling over us and judging us. God is the core of creation. God is the principle, it's the guiding force that uh, permeates you, me, uh, the world, the universe and other worlds. It also permeates and precedes your thoughts, your feelings, everything. So God is just the uh, defining force of everything. Uh, so some religions also are against that. Some religions say God and the creation are not the same. I think, you know, you have to take a better look. You know, God is the truth of everything. And the thing is, you can speak to this force and you can interact with this force because the idea that you are separate from God, that's it illusion but that's also a game so within that game we can play the game of saying hey god please help me and god will answer so you should really try it specifically when you're an atheist you should try it forget the religious concepts of god forget all this guilt just picture a force picture a spirit picture just the core of everything which is because everything springs from nothingness picture this core give it a name if you don't want to call it god you can call it chuck <laughs> but it has to be a name that you respect you don't have to give it any name and then uh, when you have a specific particular worry wholeheartedly give this worry give this problem to God. Say, you know, I give it away. Someone else is, quote unquote, someone else is working on it for me. Uh, so don't carry it. Don't carry your burden. Give that burden away. And of course, you still have to live your life. So, 
But see what happens. See what ideas you get when you stop carrying your, your worry. See what maybe people you meet will say to you and give you the inspiration you need. So, perfect example. Uh, when I prepared the title for this topic, I had no idea what I would say. Because usually I like to cook fresh. Uh, so, so I sit down 20 minutes before I go live and I make my notes because, because, I, because I don't want to think too much about it. I want it to be fresh. But uh, as soon as I had posted the, the announcement for this talk, I came across a post on my Facebook feed where someone told a story with exactly that content. How he was forced to give his problems to God because he could not carry them anymore. He had a burnout and, and this burnout forced him to say, okay, you know, if you want me to die, I'm ready, take me because I cannot carry my life anymore. I'm ready to die. And then he received the same message. Give me your worries. Hand them to me. So it's a practical advice. For, for non-religious, non-spiritual people, this may sound like crazy juju. Um, okay. <laughs> you are entitled to your opinion. But I think when you're a very uh, science-oriented person, you should, ex should experiment. Because this is what I did. Uh, when I started on my spiritual path, I started to experiment. I said, okay, let, let's give this a try. So let's truly give it a try. Not half-heartedly. Let's say, okay, I have this one problem that I cannot solve. I wholeheartedly give this to God and make this my personal experiment. So see what happens. So I have a similar story that happened to me in the 90s. Uh, so in the 90s, in the early mid-90s, I had a girlfriend. Oh, she was a great person, but at the same time, our relationship was difficult. Uh, we had so many discussions and troubles and fights. And at the time, I was fortunate enough, you know, I lived in Germany, but I was fortunate enough to be able to study abroad for a year. So I went to Glasgow, Scotland to study drawing and painting for a year, which was a dream come true for me. Um, it was pre-internet, pre-email, so the only contact were letters, postcards and phone calls. Uh, no cell phones either. At least I didn't have one at the time because it was not so common. And uh, while I was in Glasgow, the relationship with my girlfriend got, got more and more difficult. And I still remember we had these phone calls and at some point I just tried everything. I tried, okay, let's listen, let's talk calmly, let's talk about the entire problem. No solution. Everything was still difficult. But then I tried, let's fight. So we had fights over the phone. So we fought and said, you know, it's your fault, it's your fault, and you do this and you do this. Still, nothing. I wrote her love letters. I just said, okay, I just give all my love still. It was whatever I did, it was unsolvable. And I wanted to solve it because I still loved her. It was not like, you know, she was a person I didn't like. It was just like with the person that I really liked and loved. Life was so difficult. At some point, I literally could not bear it anymore. So I just came back from one phone call with her, which again had been difficult, terrible. Everything's horrible, everything's wrong. And I just lay down on my bed with this heavy, heavy, heavy feeling, which was so heavy. The pain for me was so intense. I could not bear it anymore. I just couldn't move. So then lying on my bed, the following thing happened. I realized, okay, I have tried everything that I can think of. And I want this relationship to work. But still, whatever I do, there is no understanding. So at some point, suddenly, all this heaviness went away. And I said, you know, in that case, I can just as well go get up and live my life here in Glasgow and be happy. This does not mean I say our relationship is finished. It just meant... I stop worrying about it because my worries got me nowhere. <laughs> my efforts got me nowhere. So I just 
So, so this was pre, me, pre-spiritual, me not thinking of God as a valid concept. It was the, the same way, like many people still are. I thought that's not a valid concept, God. That's just for, for gullible people who are not really looking at the world the way it is. So I have changed, you know, I look at the world the way it is and I realize there is a guiding force. So but at the time I did not. So this problem, I just lifted off my chest and I was fine. The problem had not gone away, just me, I was fine. So, okay, you know, I tried what I could. I had a good time, you know. I went back to college, did my painting, met my friends, I had a great time. So there are still more fights in the future, and at some point we separated, which probably was, was good for both of us. Um, uh, but this is an example how you do not have to carry your problems. So I have some more bullet points that I would like to go through that I have received. So number one, fear, because a lot of worries are related to fear. Uh, so, so my worry with my girlfriend was related to the fear of us breaking up because I didn't want to. Uh, maybe also the fear of being alone. So I was afraid our relationship might end, might come to an end. You know, I was a young man and it, it really worried me. Uh, so fear is related to worries and the uh, bullet point I received, fear is a lack of recognition of God. Uh, fear is a lack of recognition of God. Uh, when we fear something, uh, we feel that we are threatened by that something. This means we do not realize everything, literally everything, is God. So everything is one. Uh, your human experience may lead to pain, may lead to death. But on the other side of pain and death is still God. It's still essentially you. So you have, you know, your, your soul, the core of you has no limits, has no boundaries. It is limitless as everything is one with God, is actually God. You know, the soul and the creator God, that's the where, where it all comes together, where unity happens. So when we fear something, we do not recognize that it's still God looking at us. You know, the person who is trying to beat me up is God. Uh, the, uh, my fin impen impending financial ruin is God. You know, and on the other side of that story, I'm still there. You know, I cannot stop existing. God cannot stop existing. Uh, so my fears are always related to, to something temporary because I have not developed the faith to trust that my path will continue no matter what happens to me. Even when I have difficult, very difficult um, things happening in my life, my path goes on. So fear is a lack of recognition of God. So that's okay. Again, you know, we're human. I'm afraid sometimes too. Same thing. Despite my uh, spiritual talks here about unity, you know, it happens. Uh, but the solution is the same. I have to give that to God. I have to give myself to God to uh, find a way to move on. To find, uh, find a good way to move on, to travel lightly. So, moving on, traveling lightly to, to bullet point number two. Uh, bullet point number two is a light heart is a strong heart. Uh, so when you have a heavy heart, you are carrying something that you should not carry. So again, let me differentiate. For example, when you've lost a loved one and you grieve, yes, your heart will be heavy. And I'm not saying that that's wrong. That is natural. You have to go through your grief and this will mean your heart will be heavy and it will come in waves, it will be heavy again and again and again. But for example, if you allow your feelings of grief to flow, uh, if you allow them 
to be there if you do not judge them. If you say, this is me, I am terribly sad again for the uh, hundredth time now because I've lost this loved one who was really close to me. So, so acknowledge that grief and allow that grief to be there. Yeah, and this will lead you to yourself. Uh, so you stop lingering on, I lost the person, I lost the person, I lost the person, I lost the person. It will lead you to yourself and your heart will get lighter. It does not mean it will be giddy happy. It just means, means this is the way to get rid of the burden. There's a really good example in music. Blues music is exactly that. The concept of the blues is something that I also think is really valuable to embrace. You sing about what's making you sad or you express one way or another what's making you sad. You write in your diary, I'm so sad, I don't know what to do, you know, express it. You make a painting, make a drawing. Maybe you're a dancer, you, you, you express your sadness in a way, you give it a voice and guess what? healing happens. So John Lee Hooker in a song, The Healer song, sang about that. You know, blues is the healer and that's a concept. That's a really healthy concept. Express your gratitude, express your happy feelings, but also express your sad feelings. Talk to a friend, tell them how you feel. Say, can you listen to me? Can you give me your ear? I want to just talk about it. I don't need your solution. I just need you to be here to listen to me, voice, uh, how I feel and this brings you back to yourself and you stop carrying that problem you express it and by expressing it you permeate it with your love with your light and this will lighten your heart so sing the blues don't have a heavy heart sing the blues one way or another that's a very very practical way to deal with 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 grief and with worry and with sadness uh, so dive into it uh, go into the deepest point of your sadness. And at the deepest point of your sadness, at the deepest point of your depression, there is light. Uh, usually the heaviness comes from us not going deep enough. Um, this is, for example, also a martial art principle in uh, Aikido. The Japanese martial art of Aikido. You know, the, so they, the, it plays with a with the, with the idea of a conflict, you know, two forces going against each other. And the idea of Aikido is you go inside the conflict. Uh, and this way you change what's happening. Of course, it's difficult in, in real life, you know, when someone really wants to beat you up. But that's why you practice this. You practice it to stop going against something and, you know, you don't want to just blend with it. You want to go into the core of that other force and create unity. And you can do exactly the same uh, with sadness, with worries, with depression. You have to find a way to go deep into it. And like I said, you know, expressing it is, for example, one way. You give it a voice. Uh, give it a voice in your diary. Give it a voice through song. So, so that's a healer. Uh, a light heart is a strong heart. The way to get there is to, to go deep into what's really troubling you. And this leads to bullet point number three. That's the last bullet point, point I have. Um, this is freedom is homemade. It's another human feeling that our woes and worries and also other things in our life, you know, hinder us from being free. I totally understand that and I respect that feeling. You know, I can only be free if this or this happens is the usual feeling. You know, if my job only were better, I'd be free. If I wouldn't need money to live, I'd be free. Uh, if I just were a little more healthy, I'd be free. So it's, it's an understandable feeling. At the same time, I think it's not true. I think freedom really is the power to be who you are and to make your choices within your story. Because you cannot and should not escape your story. So when you're handicapped, that is your story. 
you are sad when you're grieving, that is your story. Uh, also, on the other side of the spectrum, when you're incredibly rich and at the same time incredibly happy, that is your story. Yeah. So, embracing your story and making your choices as you within that story, that is freedom. Uh, you choose who you want to be, but you also acknowledge who you already are. And then you, you realize, so, so what do you want to do within that framework? Uh, so again, sing the blues. So when you have a problem, leverage that problem by expressing it, by moving through it, not against it. Uh, so this is how you deal with woes and worries. And of course, these very fundamental concepts are often difficult to apply. And this is where sometimes you seek a guide. You, know, you seek someone to say, okay, you know, I have this problem, my, my grief won't go away, I'm constantly worried, I don't know, I'm depressed. So you find, uh, find a guide who can guide you through this process of expressing what you feel of going into the core of the issue. Um, essentially also of giving it to God. Although I highly recommend that you do that first, you know, give your problems to God and say, please help me. And then maybe that guide comes your way. But I um, wholeheartedly recommend if you have, have things that you want to move through and if you want to improve, uh, find a mentor, find a coach. Contact me, for example. Uh, but maybe also you have a best friend who, who you feel can help you. Uh, but these are the concepts. So how to deal with woes and worries. Hand them all to me, says God. Remember, fear is a lack of recognition of God. Uh, remember, a light heart is a strong heart. And you make your heart light by expressing what you feel by going into the core of it, going deeper into it. Don't run away from it. And finally, freedom is homemade. So create your freedom. Be you, be happy, and I love you. And thanks for listening. Have a great day.